Come on, can we give Jesus a big shout on this Palm Sunday? Come on. Father, we love you. We love you. Did you know that we're living stones? You know, Jesus said, if you stop these, the stones will cry out. Come on. Can we just cry out just a moment? Come on. Because how good, how good is God? How good is he? How faithful is God? How amazing is Jesus? Come on. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. May you receive the righteous reward of your suffering. Jesus, we want to give you everything you paid for. We don't want to give you half price. We want to give you full price. Amen? Amen. Bless God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm super excited. I, you know, it was, it was funny. When, you, when we were standing there when we were in worship, and then right before your wife got up to share, bless you, thank you for that word, I saw you go down and hit your knees, and the Holy Spirit said, I just spoke to him. Is that when he reminded you of the baptism? I just was, I was overwhelmed. I'm like, come on, God, you're doing it. You're doing it. It's, I mean, what we don't want to do is we don't want to forget where we came from. You can have all this, and it's amazing, but if you forget where you came from, I mean, that's why I share my testimony most places I go. People are like, I heard his testimony. You don't understand. Testimony means do it again with the same power that you did it before. Because if God did it once, he'll do it again. He's no respecter of persons. It's amazing. So don't be afraid of sharing your testimony or never, ever, ever. Sometimes people are afraid of sharing where they came from because they're embarrassed. There should be such a contrast from who you were to who you are. Are you hearing me? Like the, the gospel doesn't just change a little bit of stuff. It, it, it changes everything. Like the gospel brings transformation. Transformation is metamorphosis. It's, it's the caterpillar into butterfly. Like there's, there's no, like you can't, you, you can tell the difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly. Like if I put a caterpillar here and I showed you what it was going to be after it went into the cocoon and after it came out, you would say, ain't no way. Right? That should be every Christian's life. That should be the reality of every Christian's life on the planet. There should be nothing about who you were as to who you are in Christ. I mean, when you share it, people should go, there's no way. <laughs> yes, it's Yahweh. It's amazing. Come on. It's so good. You know, I, when I first met, when I first met Papa Che, I don't, I don't know if he remembers it, but I do. Um, it, was at a, it was at a Voice of the Apostles that you were at, because you've done them for... How long? Quite a long time, right? But I went and, and I was so excited. It was in my first year of being saved. And I'm like, oh my gosh, these men and women are amazing. And you handed me a book and you said, the Lord told me to give this to you. It was your book on fire evangelism. And I read it in like a week. And I was like so excited. I'm taking down notes. I'm like, thanks for the book. And, and over the years, it's been so important to me to be able to see and honor men and women of God that have gone before and that are out there preaching now. We can't afford to think that we figured it out. We can't afford that. I mean, I'm telling you that Malachi is, or Malachi, the Italian prophet, is so important for today that the fathers and the sons and the, that we're bringing everything together because the generations need to walk as one. It's not about you or me. It's about us coming together, the body of Christ, the fullness of him that fills all in all, running our race, lifting other people up, considering others as greater than ourselves, Philippians 2, is so important. And make sure that you never forget that zero plus God equals everything. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because it's not like I arrived. I didn't, but I'll tell you one thing I've laid hold of. Just like Paul said, one thing I've laid hold of, forgetting those things that lie behind, pressing forward to those things, and the upward call for what he's laid a hold of me for. And some people can't get that. And that is what stops us from being able to live our life out loud for Jesus. Are you hearing me? Does that sound confusing? Here, let me just break it down really in easier terms. Everything that you wished you'd never done and all the things that you wished were never done to you, when you come to Christ, the ability for grace to empower truth to happen comes right at the point of conversion. Grace is not just God's undeserved favor. It's a power word. Grace is the empowerment of God that enables truth to take place. 
Grace isn't just, I didn't deserve it and he gave it to me. Yes, that's part of it. And it's true. None of us deserve heaven. Matter of fact, when you hold things against other people, it's really bad because you'll say, well, they're going to get what they deserve. Well, if you want what you deserve, go to hell. If you get what you do, I'm going to put this here before I'm going to knock stuff down. I must did. Because the message is mobile. See, it's only a waterfall. We're okay. It's so important that you get the beginning of this gospel, the truth of it all. See, so many people live with guilt, shame, and condemnation. They live with this, this epidemic of, of can't get over yesterday and we go through program after program through counseling session after counseling session to to try to get free from these thoughts that we wish we weren't having are you with me this is not like this is not like a secret this is an epidemic what what if your yesterday never spoke into your today you know it'd be great then your tomorrow is never yesterday but if the gospel doesn't take its seat of faith, the, the truth of the gospel doesn't take its seat in your conscience, and your conscience doesn't get moved and washed from dead works, you cannot truly serve God. You will be doing things for God, but you can never do things with God. And you will enter into a place of performance that we've never really exited. I don't do things for God because I have to. I co-labor with God because I get to. I didn't choose him, he chose me. People were like, well, no, 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 there was a time when you came, no, 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 you don't get it. Like, prevenient grace is God, God was always, the availability of God was always there for me. I just didn't see it. And then when I saw it, when I got to see it, I realized that he's been looking for me since I would, before I was born. He knit me in my mother's womb, regardless of my mom or dad wanted me or they didn't want me. I'm not a mistake. I have purpose. I have destiny. And God has called me from my mother's womb to serve him and to bring the glory of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, and the power of God to humanity. He did, I, he, he chose me there. I mean, Psalms 139 says he knit me in my mother's womb. So whether my mom wanted me or not, he knit me there. Whether my mom was ready or my dad was ready, and, and they weren't. I mean, most children that are born, their parents aren't ready. As a matter of fact, we're like, we're gonna wait until we're financially stable. When does that happen? Come on, how many people have thought that? Well, we're gonna wait, just, we're just gonna wait. Well, like kids aren't mistakes. But it's so important that we come to the place and realize that God's our father, and father is such a scary word today because so many dads have really jacked it up. I jacked it up. I mean, I jacked it up for a long time. My seven and a half year old daughter only knew an animal for a father. I was a liar, I was a thief. I threatened her mom to kill her in front of her. She watched me knock people out in their cars when they beeped the horn at me. I'd get out, rage on somebody, get back in, screaming and cussing and doing all the stuff that normal people do. Because we're in a fallen world and we're born with a fallen nature, a nature that has no idea who God is. And we learn the way that seems right to a man our whole life and we grow up that way and we call it normal. It's not normal, it's demonic. Well, no, it's not demonic. I mean, come on, I was a good person. No, you were born in sin. I don't care if you were born in church. You came out on the pew. You were born in sin. Doesn't matter. How much sin you were born into is irrelevant. The truth is, is even though you were a good person in your own eyes, you weren't a perfect person in God's eyes. But you were the apple of his eye because he realizes that when your insides get changed, the lamp of your body gets changed, which is the eye. And when your lamp changes, you start to see things and it becomes a whole new world. You have a future and a destiny and a hope. This world is hopeless. And you're only as good as your last score. You're only as good as your last goal, your last touchdown, your last job, your last car you sold, your last business deal you did. And that is by works and you can never do enough. And we've got to get out of that and into him. And we've got to see the reality of the work that Christ did. I mean, if anybody had the right to be offended, it should have been Jesus. 
Think with me. I mean, all he did was amazing. All he did was love people. All he did was heal. All he did was multiply food. Like if you, if you don't have enough food at your cookout, bring Jesus. Come on, five loaves and two fish, 5,000 men plus women and children. And the families weren't small back then. So they're all without food. Jesus sees what's there. He sees this boy that Philip brings to him. I found a boy with five loaves and two fish, but surely it won't be enough to feed all these people. Jesus says, have the people sit down. At that point, what would you have said if you were Philip? Have the people sit down. I would have said, for what? Because my mind wasn't thinking like Jesus' mind was because it wasn't available. The inside of the cup couldn't be cleaned when Jesus was on the earth. The inside of the cup can only be cleaned when Jesus was crucified, resurrected, sat at the right hand, Holy Spirit was poured out like Papa Che just said. But what happens is he cleans the inside of the cup. It's the gospel, man. It's the good news. It's good tidings of great joy. It's, It's awesome. Jesus has had the people sit down. So they sit down and Jesus looks up, blesses the food. He gives it to the disciples. Now think with me, there's five loaves and two fish and 12 disciples. Figure it out. What's the portion that each of them got? Okay, go feed them. It doesn't say it multiplied in Jesus's hands. It says it multiplied as they gave it away. What would you do if you're a disciple and you go out with your one and a quarter loaf and a head of a fish. And as they grabbed, it kept coming. It's not like they came back to fill the basket again. What would that do to you? What would that do to you? Oh my gosh, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. I would be like, "Ah!" when you carry him, your life becomes, why? Because you can never outgive God. It has to do with your finances. It has to do with your time. It has to do with your love. It has to do with healing. It has to do with your grace that you carry. It has to do with everything. He is fabulous. And he's not, he's just not like you think. He's better than you think. He's like, he's gooder than you think. There, I said it wrong for some people. Because some people are struggling with my man bun. I mean, you... You're like, what is happening and why doesn't he cut his hair? I put it there for a reason, for you. (laughs) To say, why didn't he cut his hair? Because, come on, God offends your mind to reveal your heart. But sometimes we look at the outside and we don't see the inside. and That's why we're missing millions of people in our everyday walk because we're more concerned with how we see and how he sees. <laughs> Ooh, that would hurt. <laughs> I've had this privilege of, of being free for 19 years. I'm like, uh, I can't explain to you how amazing it is, but I woke up this morning. The Holy Spirit woke me up this morning. You know what he said? I love you. People are like, well, duh, he loves us. No, no, no. There's a difference between you saying he loves me and you being loved by him. (laughs) Oh, see, he's doing it right now. He loves me. I'm like his favorite. (laughs) But we all have the privilege of being his favorite. We just don't all believe it. Why? Because we think we're worthless. What if the price that Jesus paid determined your value instead of what you've done for him? What if, what if Jesus didn't pay such a price because I was such a horrible sinner? Maybe underneath of that sin was of something of such importance that he paid such a high price to redeem because if I see who he's really created me to be, sin shall no longer have dominion over me. I will reckon myself dead to sin and alive unto Christ. Jesus didn't pay a price just to forgive your sin. Sometimes we teach that. Like if you believe in your heart, Romans 10, it it does say, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And that word saved is a word sozo. It's a Greek word. 
It means to be saved, healed, delivered, protected, made whole, kept safe and sound, to be kept safe from harm, to do well. That's like nine different things. That's pretty awesome, that word means. But we've taken one of those things, and that's just get to heaven. What we've done is we've shortchanged the gospel by making it about trying to get there instead of him possessing that which was lost so that we can actually live with the mission of the kingdom. And the mission of the kingdom is 1 John 3, 8. For this reason, Jesus Christ was made manifest, the son was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So the reason why every Christian is on the planet is to understand who they are in Christ, who Christ is in them, and they are commissioned to destroy the works of the enemy as a full-time commission from God the second that you get born again. But it's very hard to destroy hell if you're still thinking like it. What is hellish thinking? It's easy. Any place where guilt, shame, condemnation, regret, and fear access your soul, it is actually demonic thinking. Come on. What's one of the biggest epidemics in the body of Christ? Depression. What's another epidemic? Regret. What's another epidemic? Guilt. Another one? Shame. Another one? Condemnation. These are horrible, horrible, horrible thought process, processes that the body of Christ seems to meditate on instead of dwelling and meditating on things above like Philippians 4 teaches. It is very important. It is everything. I'm telling you that your whole Christian life hinges on truth. See, it is the truth that sets you free. Jesus said, then they will know the, and the truth will set them free. Well, if the truth has set us free, Maybe since we're not living in freedom, we don't believe the truth. Is that hard? To, is that hard? Like, if, if, if truth has set us free and freedom comes from truth and we're living in a place of bondage, we have to realize there can only be one answer. I don't believe the truth. It's really not complicated. I, I'm trying to break it down simple. Jesus said, the little children can get this. I want to preach a gospel that kids can get because if kids can get it, the only reason why adults don't get it is because they're too smart for God. It's a shame that we allow the wisdom of man to triumph the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is peaceable, it's gentle, it's willing to yield, it's full of good fruits, it's without partiality, and it's without hypocrisy. The wisdom of man is sensual, it's demonic, it's full of self-seeking and envy, and every evil thing is in here. It's in James 3. Every evil thing rests in the wisdom of man. We are born and cultivated by the wisdom of man. When you get born again, that wisdom has no right to rule your life unless you do not begin your journey of being renewed in the spirit of your mind. There's no way out of this. I prompt, the only way out of this is saying, well, I don't believe what he has to say. And that's a cop out because all I'm doing is sharing the word with you. Everything I'm sharing is word upon word. I promise you. Because I live in the secret place and I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and with all my strength. And if you start to see the journey of starting to love God with all of your mind, this thing gets changed. Are you guys with me? Come on. Romans 12, 1. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can approve or prove the will of God. <sighs> Offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable and pleasing service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can approve what is and what is not the will of God. We are supposed to be the sharpest people on the planet when it comes to understanding the will of God in every situation, no matter what you're facing. Come on, this is weird because some people handle the will of God like a hot potato. I don't know whatever, I don't, I don't know the will of God. I don't know. That's why we can't pray in faith. You can't pray in faith if you don't know God's will. 
all of a sudden someone dies, you prayed and they didn't make it and all of a sudden you assume that must be the will of God because they died. That's not what the word says. If Jesus prayed for them, would they have been healed? Come on, this is a sore subject, buddy, because we've all lost people. I've lost a lot of people. Relatives, I've lost them. And I don't like it. But I can't afford to negotiate my faith for the sake of what didn't happen at the cost of God's word that sets men free. You all right? That's a touchy subject, buddy. You start touching that and get people angry. And I don't care if you're angry at me or not. It's the truth of God's word. Besides, Papa Che can clean it up. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Do you know that on today, on Palm Sunday, when Jesus came into the town, what did they do when Jesus was coming in? What did they do? They let, remember when you were little and you went to like, I was talking to Papa Chase this morning, you know, Sunday school and they gave you a palm branch, you know. And I thought, what is this? But it, it's what they laid down when Jesus walked through on the donkey. Are you with me? What did they say? Hosanna, Hosanna. What the kids were singing. Hosanna in the highest. It was beautiful. The anointing was really there. I started to cry right away. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes, buddy. It was beautiful. The kids singing. But I want you to think with me. Think about Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened. Ever. And they laid down palm branches and he's coming in. Triumphant entry. It is like the most beautiful time ever. And he's coming in. And the Pharisees are like, what are we going to do? The whole world is worshiping him. Like they're frustrated because they're not being worshiped. But they're so mad because the king of glory is coming in. They're laying down palm branches. It's all through scripture. It's amazing. Behold your king riding on a colt, riding on a donkey. Like it's all coming right in front of them. And they're blinded by this self-righteousness. They're blinded. And they're so frustrated. Jesus, you know, he comes in. Do you understand that the same people that laid down palm branches in seven days are going to be saying, Crucify! How could you live with that? And, and God always told Jesus what was coming. Come on, Jesus knew what was coming. He only said what the Father said. He only did what the Father did. He was so in union with the Father. Jesus knew these people were gonna turn their backs. And he's going through on the donkey. He's not like, idiots. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, whatever with your Hosanna. I'm sorry, that's just not God. And all of a sudden he goes through and these people are laying palm branches down. And just in a few days, all these people, all of them, not a couple of them, all of them are going to betray him. All of them. How do we process betrayal? How do we live with betrayal in the body of Christ? How do we do with that thing? I mean, how many people are hurt because somebody did something that they shouldn't have done? How many, don't raise your hands. My God, don't raise your hands. No, don't, 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 please. Because it's almost everybody. And how many people get really hurt by somebody in leadership, some church leader, and so all of a sudden we go to another church because we just got totally blasted by somebody. We finally get up the courage to go to another church and then we're okay for a little while and then, bam, you see something. Oh, dang, there it is again. What happens? I, I, haven't, I haven't gotten free from what happened before. So now I'm going from church to church to church looking for love but only finding fault and when I try to plug in, I'm, I'm hurt again and I can't. And so what happens is sometimes we, we even pull back from church and we say, we're just gonna have this and we establish wound licking clubs at the house that just talk about our hurt and our pain and never plug into a local body. Come on, man, that one stings. Why? Because I don't wanna hear it. You don't know what I've been through. No, 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 you don't know what he went through so that you could be free. This is a really huge thing. You know, you know, Papa Chase did some very honoring things to me today. I appreciate that. And I, I've loved Jesus. Why? Because I've never allowed my heart to be a, an offended place ever. 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 And I don't know that to be common throughout the body of Christ. Because there's a lot of hurt 
people that hurt people. And it's not okay. And if anybody had the right to be hurt, it would have been our king. You know, he comes through. You know, I don't know if you know that it's, you know, that you read the Bible in context. You know, on the same day that he came through and everybody's saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, Jesus could have let that get to his head. But he wasn't because he was humble. And humility enables you to live free from your head getting big. It keeps your heart big and your head small. And Jesus comes in. You know, that as soon as he gets off the donkey, you know what he does? He walks into the temple. Do you know what happens there? <laughs> He comes into the church. And what happens? Oh, Hosanna in the highest is about to go off. <laughs> it's the same day. It's not like it's a different day. He comes into the church and what does he see? He sees the money changing tables. He sees all the different stuff in there. And was he happy about that? No, but he was just praised. Hosanna in the highest. And, and sometimes in ministry, sometimes you can be growing in ministry and you can be receiving props from people and thanks and praises and all that stuff and you come upon something that's not okay and you tolerate it and you're okay with it because you don't want to ruffle any feathers. After all, you're getting somewhere. <laughs> this is so important because all of a sudden you're getting somewhere. So what happens is you water down the message to, to fit the situation and you take the word of God and you make it of null effect for the sake of people's tradition and the sake of people's wants and desires. But not Jesus, see? Jesus did things like he came into the temple. He saw it. I was crazy because I, I used to watch the Gospel of John. It's the visual. I still do, actually. I watch it all the time. It's the visual Bible. Did you ever see it before? Did you ever see the visual Bible? I love it. So my daughter, my little daughter, when we first got saved, she's watching the visual Bible with me and I, t I was teaching her that mean people only need Jesus. And so we end up seeing this scene where it comes in and Jesus is flipping tables, man. He's going around and my daughter looks at me. She goes, Daddy, Jesus needs Jesus. <laughs> I said, pray for me. <laughs> it was funny. It was so funny. But it was like this common thing where, look, Daddy, Jesus needs Jesus. Because mean people need Jesus. The fact that unforgiveness or hate or anger or bitterness plagues your soul, it's, it's, there's, there's things in your life that you haven't surrendered. Come on. It, look, if you've got, I'm, I'm just going to say this. If you've got a problem with this one and this one and this one, it's not them, it's you. <laughs> if, if you've got a problem with this one and this one and this one, it's you. And pride will get you to say, who does that man think he is? It's not me, it's that but when you stand before God, sorry, you're going to get before God. All those people, and I'll tell you, I'm going to peace of my mind. I'm going to, some people think when they get before God, they're going to give them a piece of their mind. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. You'll be in a puddle of mush on the ground for a thousand years. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. All this stuff you're going to see is just a facade. It was a demonic attack. Trying to strat just strategy, strategically, the enemy wants to put all this here so you can never see who you are, so you can never look in the mirror and understand you are a mighty man, a mighty woman of God, that you can live free from offense, free from hurt. You can live your life full on for God. Nothing has the right to slow you down. There is nothing that has the right to make you cold. All we need is freedom from all that junk. Freedom because the gospel is the only thing that sets people free. Jesus paid more of a price than just to get you to heaven. He paid a price for heaven to possess your soul. For you to think from there towards here. Setting your mind on things above and not beneath. Burning with a holy righteous fire. Able to raise your voice in the midst of a perverse and corrupt generation, regardless of the cost, because you've counted the cost. You've surrendered everything. You said, God, I'm going to preach your word no matter where you put me. doesn't matter where culture is. It matters where kingdom is. And I'm going to preach the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. People are going to get free, and people are going to volunteer because it's the days of your power. And that's what days we're in right now. That's what days we're in right now. I feel like Braveheart yelling freedom 
to a group of people that have been in bondage. It's time that we wake up and see why we're on the planet. It's time that we burn with holy fire. Stop bowing your knee to Baal and give your heart to God fully and completely. Stop being afraid of what the government might say. Stop being afraid of what the elections might bring. Jesus didn't lose the throne. He's still sitting there. He's sitting there saying, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with what I gave you? What are you gonna do? That's my God, that's my King. He's not afraid of culture. He's not afraid of all this stuff that we're afraid of. There is no fear in love, perfect love casts out all fear. It's time for us to rise up and see who we're created to be and burn like you're created to burn. You burn now so people don't burn for eternity. Man, come on. I don't care if anybody goes with me. God is for me. It doesn't matter who's against me. One person in Christ that knows who they are is the majority. A thousand devils and one Jesus. I don't think a thousand devils have a chance. I'm serious. This is real. The boldness that you carry comes from your conscience being clean. Comes from you forgiving and letting all that stuff go. Stop holding stuff against people that didn't know who they were when they did it. The reason why you got hurt, I don't care who they were, how high they were up in the church. If you got hurt by it, it's because you didn't know who, what, who you were when it came. They didn't know who they were and they gave it to you. You didn't know who you were when it came. Neither validate each other. Let it go. Let's go after God. Let's stop living a lie. Let's stop living in bondage. Why don't you wake up with hope instead of being hopeless? Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. It's time that we light the fire again inside of our heart and burn for Jesus. I am not a motivational speaker. I am a burning voice. I feel like John the Baptist, and I'm okay with that. I just am not eating locusts and honey. I like honey, but keep your locusts. But I'm not playing a game. I am a Nazarite. I live a pure life. I burn for God. I'm not bringing stuff in. I don't have closets. I don't have issues. You're not going to read about me in the paper. Oh, he really was this. It's time that all that junk ceases. It's time that the authentic man, woman of God rises up, burning with the eternal fire of God. There is a baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire that is available for everybody that would want it. And there is nothing that can hold you back except for you. It's a lack of surrender, and that's all it is. It's a lack of surrender, and all we gotta do is say, here I am, God, use me. Stop watching CNN thinking that you're gonna get somewhere with that. You're not getting anywhere with that. Start to open the book, we win, we win. We win. Man. I have the Holy Ghost. No one can take him away from me. I have not been rejected since I've been saved for 19 years. People say, well, you haven't been through what I've been through. Maybe you don't see what I see. Maybe since the Father accepted me, you can't take away what you never gave me. Maybe we've allowed people to take away our joy because our joy hasn't come from our salvation. Maybe we've allowed people to determine whether I have strength because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Maybe you've allowed people to limit us because God gave us a package unlimited. It's called the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Maybe we need a real, authentic encounter with the Holy Ghost. Maybe we need an encounter with the spirit of burning. Maybe the fire of God has been waiting for you to be hungry for it. We can't afford to feast on the world and taste test Jesus and think that we're gonna get a good crop out of that. Man, you are what you eat and you can't afford to eat that stuff anymore. You need to eat the living bread and drink living water and burn with the gospel. It's not okay just to come to church. No, you are the church, we are the body of Christ. I love coming to church, I love getting together, but this is a commissioning. There should be, you're now entering 
your mission field right on the door when you walk out. You should have it in your car, on your steering wheel. You're now entering the mission field when you walk out of your door. I'm telling you that everything that you do should be under the Lord, Colossians 3, 17. Whatever you do in word or in deed, you do it as under the Lord and not for people. It's time that we rise up, stop biting the bait of Satan. Stop living in a place of compromise. Stop living in a place where you're let, letting this stuff rule your life. Pornography, alcohol, drugs, all that stuff, man. It falls off when you meet him. Yeah. We can be a people that are free. We can be a people that burn. Some people out there are like, this guy's a little too excited. No, it's called passion. I am a laid down lover burning for God. It's a passionate heart cry of the Father. He wants your heart. He wants your whole life. He wants you to surrender and give your heart back to him. Stop living for you. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's the wisdom of the world. It's self-seeking. It's sensual, it's demonic, and every evil thing is there. It's time that we full on surrender and give our hearts to the King of glory. I'm telling you right now, on this Palm Sunday, we have the opportunity to surrender and say, Jesus, I want you, and I'm not stopping at nothing. Listen, I believe that God has spoken to many hearts. I'm just in here, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, stop. I want you right now, if you want God, to mark your heart, and if you want to carry this courageous, contagious fire, right now, I want you to stand to your feet. I didn't come here to entertain. I came here to absolutely, completely cut your heart asunder with the truth of God's word, and I believe God's done it. If you're here, and you've backslid, and you wanna run after God, I want you to run forward right to the altar right now. I want you to get down here. If you wanna surrender and give your whole heart to him right now, I want you down here. Come on, I want you down here. Come on, right now, find something worth dying for. Find something worth dying for. Man, I feel like a lion, buddy. Jesus is gonna pounce on people because he loves you and he wants you to burn. He wants you to let go of all that stuff that so easily ensnares you. It says, let us let go of the sin that so easily ensnares us. He wants us to let it go, why? So we can let go and let God finally have his way. Come on, if this is you, if you need to be in this call, I want you down here. I want you to make a move. I want you to make a move. Can I get the worship team, somebody up here? Man, I feel a fire right now. I'm talking a fire. Yes. Look, if you're not a believer, but you'd like to believe, but you ain't coming in softly, you're coming in violently right now. If that's you, I want you down here. It's a big deal. Come on, guys, I'm asking you to obey right now. There's gonna be people getting free, there's gonna be people getting delivered, drug addiction's breaking off right now. This stuff's leaving. Porn addiction's breaking off right now in the name of Jesus. It's leaving. I'm not joking, I'm for real. Is there anybody else? Come on, anybody else? If your heart's pounding, that's you. If your heart's pounding, that's you. Come on, it's time to give him everything. 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 I'm proud of you, man. You're gonna, you're gonna change the world, buddy. Woo! Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Church out there, I want you to extend your hands towards these. Come on. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for all of these. I thank you for these surrendered ones. Jesus, light a fresh fire in there. God, we thank you. Right now, the burning ones, God, I thank you that you raise up burning ones out of this church. That God, the fire of heaven would rest upon these people. Father, thank you that you don't just forgive us, but you remove what we wish we'd never done. That's what you do. You remove it. Doesn't matter how horrific, doesn't matter how bad it was. You remove it as though we never did it. God, you take our bodies that are riddled with, with scars from yesterday, with cutting scars and with drug addiction and hepatitis and blood disorders and venereal diseases and all that mess. And God, since you forgive us, 
and we're never going to be judged for where we've been, the stain that's in our body from yesterday must be removed because it has no right to judge us anymore. Whoa, I'm serious. It's complete redemption of the body. It's redemption of the blood. It's redemption of the organs right now. Hep C, gotta go in Jesus' name. Blood disorders, gotta go in Jesus' name. Drug addiction, diseases in Jesus' name. Gotta go, blood be healed in Jesus' name. Right now, Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we say yes. We say yes. We're letting go of all the pain and all the hurt. We forgive right now. I want you to lift your voice. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I'm not holding this against anybody. I forgive. Come on. I forgive. I forgive my dad. I forgive. I forgive. Let it go right now. Let it go. I forgive. I forgive. Come on, say it. Say, I forgive. Come on. Come on, raise your voice. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Come on, do it right now. Lift your voice. Everybody over there. I forgive. I'm not going through Easter with unforgiveness. I let it go. I let it go. I let it go. I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, right now, I give my everything to you. I hold nothing back. I believe that you paid the price for me to be forgiven of all of my sin. God, I believe that you removed my sin. That you remove my sickness. That you heal my body. That you empower me with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I say yes to you right now. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Ask you more right now. Touch him. Touch him right now. 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 Flame of heaven. Touch him. Touch him. Flame of heaven. Touch. Touch. Shuka nina namasha. Jesus come. Jesus come. Jesus come. Fill. 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 I need him. Fill him. Fill him. You're not the man you used to be, buddy. God's going to raise you up a champion. Jesus. Today is a mighty day for you, my friend. You have run away for long enough. Today, you came home. Jesus, do it. Light him up. No longer will you lead men in the street. Now you're leading men into the kingdom. You're a rescuer, a warrior. Jesus, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, thank you. A fresh touch. Jesus, touch. Fill. Fire of your presence, God. Jesus' name. Flame of heaven. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just say this, Holy Spirit. We want all that you have. Right now. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. All over the auditorium. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Jesus. Catch her. Shoot. Phil. 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 Fresh. 
fresh fire fresh fire shuka anena namasate ferdo shanda jesus a fresh fire for business in jesus name if you need god to touch your business lift your hands father we thank you for entrepreneurs we thank you for the flame of heaven upon businesses god i ask you to anoint them god let them become storehouses god in the mighty name of jesus holy spirit touch them touch the businesses god we thank you for heaven's hand let them become storehouses to further the gospel god i thank you that you give seed to the sower in jesus name multiply seed unto them in jesus name if you need prayer for healing put your hand in the air real quick i want everybody around you i want everybody to put their hand on somebody's shoulder right now please everybody come on i need you to help me pray Jesus Jesus I want you to say this right now in Jesus name head be healed ears open eyes see neck be healed back be healed shoulders be healed joints be healed arthritis get out complete healing from every disease and every sickness cancer get out blood diseases get out liver diseases get out lung diseases get out Brand new kidneys. Brand new hips. Brand new backs. Come on. Every nerve be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Brand new. Fertility be restored. In Jesus' name. Say that again. Fertility be restored there will be no problems with having children I mean that father thank you for healing and wholeness feet be healed feet be healed neuropathy get out oh there's something there I promise you feet be healed right now neuropathy I break your power in the name of Jesus get out now from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus I want everybody in this room to check your body physically right now. Check for something that was hard for you to do. Lift your arm, raise your shoulders, bend your back, bend your knees, move your ankles. Just check right now. Please check. I'm really serious. Just take 10 seconds and check. Step on your foot. If you had, look if you had bone spurs, just step on it. They'll disappear. I'm really not kidding. If you had a problem with your shoulder, lift it up. Come on, two, three times, three times. If it's gone, wave your hand at me. Come on. This is no joke. Now watch. I want you to check your body. I want you to do 10. Please trust me on this. 10 seconds. Check what you could to see if it's gone. Elbows, backs, knees. Just check. 10 seconds. Come on. If you know healing has happened in your body and you can sense it. I'm not just saying you believe in for it. But you can sense that it's happened. Wave both hands over your head. Come on. Come on. 
If, if you have a deaf ear and you're in the room and you have an ear that's deaf, put your hand up. Okay, keep your hand up. Who else? A deaf ear. All right, okay. All right, people that have their hand up, keep it up like this. I want people around you. I want them to put their hands on their ears. Just like this. Come on. How many of you believe Jesus can open the ears of the deaf? Come on. On the count of three, we are going to all yell pop. Because the ear needs to pop open. It's not in the pop, it's in the name of Jesus, right? But because of the name of Jesus, we speak to that ear, be healed. Pop open, okay? How many of you believe he'll heal deaf ears? Come on, he's really good at it. He's the only God that can. Come on, who opens the ears of the deaf? Come on, are you, re- are you ready? On the count of three, we're gonna yell pop and ears are gonna open. Are you ready? Yes, one, two, three, pop! If you sense something in your ear that opened, I want you to wave your hand at me. If you can sense it. Okay, right there. Good, good, good. Who else? If something happened in your ear, we just yelled pop. And your ear opened. I want to see your hand. I want to see your hand right now. Is it, is it healed? But it's better. Okay, we're going to do it again. Is it better? Ears. It's okay. We'll pray again. Hey. We can pray again. It's okay. Okay? Come on. Hey, look at me. You're an amazing woman of God. He loves you. You didn't do anything to deserve this. The devil's a jerk. We just kick him out, okay? All right. Let's pray again. Put your hand on your ears. Who here has breakthrough in their ears right now? I want to see right now. You have breakthrough in your ears. We already prayed. I want to see it. Who has breakthrough? There's breakthrough. It needs more. Who else has breakthrough? Is it, is it healed? Is it gone or is it just getting there? Okay, that's good. Let's do it again. Hey, look, getting there is good. We're better than we were. When you're praying for healing, you're better than what you started. Keep going. Are you with me? We thank God for what we have. Be thankful for what we have. Remember the loaves and the fishes? Be thankful for what we have. And what happens? It's just like that. Come on, let's be hopeful and let's be thankful. So God, we thank you for what we have. And we thank you that you're not a halfway God. You're a finished work, God. There are 12 baskets left over after you were done. Father, we thank you that just the same with healing. You want to heal. Let's do it again. Put your hands on the people's ears that you just had. Let's pray again. I want you to put your hand on her ears. There you go. Come on. So, Father, we thank you for healing and wholeness in the ears right now. We love you. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, we're not begging you. We're thanking you. You don't have to beg God. He, you don't. Come on. You just thank him because he's good. Father, we thank you for brand new ears, God. We thank you for brand new eardrums. There's a lot of people that say, well, my healing needs to fully manifest. We thank you for the full manifestation of every healing in the room. Right now, God, we thank you. We thank you that at the same time you're healing sleeping disorders in Jesus' name. At the same time, you're healing eating disorders in the same time. Father, we thank you because it's all important to you. We love you. So on the count of three, we're going to yell pop one more time. And we're going to believe for healing all over the room, plus the ears to open. Come on. We believe for the people over here that they brought in the front that are in wheelchairs. We're believing complete wholeness for your bodies in the name of Jesus. I need some people surrounding them in the wheelchairs just laying hands on them. I see you, man. He loves Jesus, all his heart. You guys ready? Father, we thank you for wholeness. We thank you for healing. I thank you, God, that you're the wonder-working God, and you are the God of miracles. And Lord, the amen of the gospel is that you confirm the word with signs following. We thank you, Father. The confirmation of the gospel is the signs follow. God, we love you. We give you glory. Ears in the name of Jesus, we command you to open. On the count of three, when we yell pop, you will open in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Pop! (laughs) 
<laughs> Come on. Come on. Whose ears are open? Whose ears open right now? Wave your hand at me. Come on. I want you to check your body for healing one more time. All through the house. Your ankles, your knees, your neck, whatever it was, your shoulders. Check right now. Just physically. Do 10 seconds of checking. Come on. Just check. It's okay to check. It doesn't matter if you felt warmth, if you felt heat. It doesn't matter. A lot of times it just happens and you don't know until you check it. If you know that you were healed and God healed you of something today, I want you to wave both hands over your head right now. Come on. Can we give Jesus a big shout? Yes! Amen. 